Hey guys. Hey Sean. It's a real pleasure to meet y'all. Um, I got to watch the movie when I was in LA in IMAX and awesome. was just the most amazing experience <laughs> I've seen. I've had in the movie theater. Uh, I just want to start off like what attracted y'all to the John Wick franchise? Oh man. I mean, for me, I was a kid in college when those first two movies came out. I mean, Chad Stahelski literally came to one of my classes before the movie came out and he was talking about the first movie. And, and then, you know, as a college kid going to see that movie, you're just immediately obsessed with it. You're like, it's the greatest movie ever made. I, you know, I was a huge fan of the second movie as well. Went to see it with a huge group of friends. And then so getting to kind of come into the franchise on the third movie and play around, I was just like so thrilled because I feel like it is just like the, the tone of these movies connects to, to, to audiences, to movie going audiences in a way that like few action movies do. It's, it's just a magical blend of like action and comedy and violence and over the topness that just makes something really special. So I'm a fan of the franchise first and just so happy to get to be here a second. I, I, I will second that, uh, what Shay was saying. I, I have to say that, you know, what's so impressive about, about this franchise, and I think what, what's so impressive about Chad and Keanu is uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's sort of the last bastion of testosterone left in America in a weird way. Um, it's, this is a child of the 70s. This, is, this, is, this movie doesn't exist without, um, you know, certainly Matrix Highlander and whatnot, but also without Bullet, Dirty Harry, French Connection, uh, and, and without The Seven Samurai. Uh, it's this melding of... A, Chad and Keanu are both film fans, one. Two, it's very plain once you have an initial conversation with them that they are all in. They're not making a movie. They are giving of themselves. They, they, these guys put everything they have into a film for years, literally. And that is, that's very addictive. It's very compelling. It's very sexy. It's like you see it and you're like, I want to be part of that. But you know the, the flip side is you, you, there's no there's no half in, half out. You, 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 you get on that train and you go. Uh, and, and 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 for better or for worse. And the, but again, there's something there's something about the single-minded vision and the refusal to do anything half-assed and the the belief that every moment and every shot counts that that put, sucks you in as a as 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 as, as a creator because it's not that's not always the case in Hollywood. And all the movies have honestly they're amazing to begin with, but each one elevates and gets better and better. Like I was mind blown. Like how can the fourth one get any better? And it does. So what's that checklist look like going into chapter four is like, this is what we need to do to make it so much better. It's hard to do, but y'all pulled it off. What do y'all do to make sure it, you know, it's bigger and better than the previous installment? I think part of that is just letting Chad go crazy because Chad is, you know, his confidence as a filmmaker grows with every movie. And I, at least for me, I'm like, I'm just doing whatever I can to service that. So whatever action idea he has, you just want to make it as big as possible so that he can, kind of render it on the biggest canvas possible. So it's that, but I also think, you know, by nature of us just expanding this world more and more with every movie, the kind of world building grows kind of more layered. So it's, I think, more visually confident, the world is more expansive and you just kind of have a bigger roster of characters that you really care so deeply about from having now been with John for four movies. So I really think it's it's just kind of a cumulative effect more than anything. Although uh, the first movie will always be my favorite, of course. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and I, I think I, I think one of the, one of the, gifts he gives us is there's no specific checklist. Chad, uh, this is sort of a, it's sort of an ass backward process. And so far as Chad comes up with these crazy ideas, like I want to something with waterfalls, like in a club. And from there you start working backwards uh, 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 and trying to fit that sequence into the movie. Uh, and, 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 and that happens over and over again. So he starts from, from really, really odd places of story and character. And Keanu starts from very odd places of character. And somewhere in there, you, you take those and you try and weave them together into a cohesive story, uh, which, you know, which is, it, which is uh, both incredibly satisfying and incredibly like soul rending, you know, because it, it just yeah. the back and forth is it's, it's sort of like full contact filmmaking. You, you, have, you have to be ready. To, both those guys are fighters, natural fighters. You got to be willing to fight. Yeah. And there's amazing scenes in this. And was there one that was really fun to write? And you mentioned some classic movies. You know, which ones in particular maybe influence a certain scene in the movie that you're just like, we have to kind of touch on that. Bad the Ugly, 100%, is, is a huge influence. You can see that. Uh, and uh, some, some of the David Lean, uh, like some of the uh, Lawrence of Arabia shots from the from the opening, um, uh, certainly an homage to the Warriors uh, uh, in, 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 in Paris. Uh, so, you know, uh, so those were sort of like some of the throwbacks. But the, the attitude of the character is very much, you know, bullet. French Connection, Dirty Harry, that, that in, 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 in a sense. Now, as far as the scenes that were fun to write, for me, I think it was the gambling scene with um with Killa Harkon, the when he's when he basically tells you that you know the mistake you all made is 
you didn't realize that once you sat down the table, you'd already lost. So it's 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 sort of that because that that really sums up the whole problem that all these characters have. They're all under the thumb of this fucking institution. They don't even know where the top of it is, and they're all trying to get out in their own ways or deal with it in their own ways, and it's a trap. And I think that that's sort of what we want. That was the theme of this of this film in a lot of ways. Absolutely. I mean, whenever you work with Chad, there's like a long list of movies he kind of makes you watch. And that's kind of part of the, the fun of it is it is film school to a certain extent. So it was Zatuichi. It was Once Upon a Time in the West. It was a million things that he's drawing inspiration from at different moments. Um, and I think for me, like the, the stuff that I kind of really enjoyed getting to, to dig into was exploring the Osaka Continental. Because to me, that's so fun is whenever you're like, oh, now we're in a different part of the world we've never been to before. There's another Continental, but it's totally texturally different than any Continental you've seen before. So getting to kind of explore that and in extension, John's relationship with the manager of that Continental and just figuring out that new web of characters is so fun because it's just kind of pulling back the curtain on another part of the world and getting to, you know, getting to kind of explore and, and kind of redefine that that territory in that new space. Right. It's all about world building. You know, the first movie was very isolated, you know, about John Wick. So when you're writing these, you know, the script, in the back of your head, are you putting like these little subplots that could be revisited later on? Because I feel like there's a lot of Awesome characters, obviously, like you said, the the different continentals, like focusing on that stuff. I know we're gonna have a spin-off ballerina. We have a bunch of stuff, like the world is getting bigger, and you got the prequel series happening. So do you put like little stuff in there so you know can be revisit vis, revisited upon later on? Not 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 on purpose. It just happens. Cause the truth is, uh, since the, the the joy of this piece is 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 what you don't know. It's what's it's what's what, it's not what we show you. It's what what it's not what Chad shows you. It's what he doesn't show you. That's really interesting, and that gives you so many opportunities as a writer. You know, you you get you get free reign essentially, and some of those threads will be followed or may be followed. Some will or may not be followed. Will not or may not be followed. Uh, so so we're just we're living in the moment because this the idea of John Wick is just happening in the moment largely. We're as writers living in the moment. And and you know and, and not necessarily too concerned about about threads from the side. We're with John. It's his story moving forward. It's just his story in an interesting world. So any any, any of those little Easter eggs, those again fall into the category of your imagination is better than our capacity to to render images or language. Uh, anything you see and you and you run with, that's a success for us, whether we we whether we knew it or not. Yeah, I couldn't say that better. It really is every movie we're just trying to write the best characters we can. And if some of those really pop and then you want to bring them back in a future installment, like that's awesome. Like, I don't know that there was an intention necessarily to bring, you know, like Lawrence Fishburne was created for the second movie, but then he just, of course, is the coolest character ever. So you're like, we're going to bring him back in three and four and just keep going. So it really is just, you know, in the moment, you're trying to make the best movie you can. But um, by nature, having all these great actors, you just want to use them again and again. So that's how it kind of keeps expanding, I think. All right. One last question. Shay, I know you kind of ballerina was kind of like a, a project for you that kind of blew up um, just your love for the franchise. Can you go back and write a John Wick video game to get picked up, please? Because I think you would be perfect to write a John Wick video game. That's really cool that you can play as any you know character in the world and have a really expansive online play. I think that'd be something up your alley. I just want to mention that if y'all can um, work on that as soon as possible. I mean, that sounds incredible. I'd love to see it more than anything. I would love to play that. So uh, if not me, I hope somebody does it. And that's <laughs> that I can get it again. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. This was great. It was a real pleasure meeting y'all. And I'm looking forward to um, the world just getting bigger in the John Wick universe. Cool. Thanks, Sean. Awesome. Thank y'all. Thank you so much.